Okay, in this lesson, we want to talk about the physical tab in a camera. For activating the physical tab, don't forget. First, you have to go and activate the physical render. The physical tab is for physical rem render because we are <coughs> talking about the um, real physical uh, behaviors of the camera. If you use a movie camera, not digital, you can activate it. And as you can see, some other tools will be deactivated. And I explain it. because it, uh, you Don't need it because uh, it's just turn the shutter speed to angle offset and efficiency. Just uh, we turn it off and we focus on the digital camera. The first thing that you have to hear, we, it, we have a, a f-stop. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I don't want to bothering your mind with all of these settings, but it's very easy. As you can see, we have a shutter speed. Uh, we have f-stop here. And as I said before, if you uh, look at this, f-stop is all about how blur your depth of field is. Okay. You can see the number of the f-stop. The smaller number of the f-stop is very easy. We have more number of uh, depths of field. You can refer to the previous lesson. I explained it before. Nice? It's easy. As soon as the f-stop. I don't want to um, go to the complex sitting of that. Exposure. Exposure, if you turn it on, the ISO parameter of <coughs> camera will be turned on. And it's exposure some sources, some reflection in uh, our camera. It's very easy. Uh, the higher number of the the higher number of the ISO will be a lot. The higher uh, number of the light go coming inside the camera, so we have a, a lighter scene here. It's very example of ISO. As you can see, if you increase the number of the ISO, we have more lighter and lighter scene. For example, as you can see <coughs> here, uh, we have a uh, light source that are exposing, exposing for. Uh, as you can see, we have a very light scene and light source here. It's very simple. It's all about uh, ISO. If you turn the movie camera, you can control it by a game. It's very simple. The shutter speed. The shutter speed, uh, it's in a second here. <clears throat> if we have a, uh, enough time to open the shutter, open the shutter, it means we have a smaller shutter. Uh, it has uh, enough time to be open and we have better motion blur. So the shutter speed for is for controlling the motion blur. Here we can control in digital in second <coughs> shutter speed, but if you turn on the movie camera, the movie that are analog, I think, you can change the offset and the angle of the shutter. Uh, if you see, this is a shutter. This is a shutter of the camera that is open and closed. And um, <clears throat> here's the shutter. You can see the real shutter. It's close. It's open and there's less light going through the film and then closed. And it's a very complex, but this is a shutter. In some other shutter, we, for example, this is our image window and the light's going through there and it cut the light and uh, we have uh, our image. These are for old camera that you can control the shutter angle. And the shutter speed is for controlling motion blur. This is motion blur. If your object is running, if your object is, has an animation, you have a motion blur for controlling. You have to control the shutter speed. First, I create a simple object to teach you how you can use it. You can go in camera and make it here. <clears throat> nice. I bring it simple animation. Going to, I think, 50 frame is enough. Select it. 
go to the this frame and uh, rotate it 180 degree. Nice, that's nice. And set the camera on. As you can see, we have a simple animation to uh, create a shutter speed. <clears throat> but don't forget, you have to go to the physical. You, you have to turn on if you want depth of field and don't forget to if you want to render the motion blur don't forget to activate the motion blur from here don't forget to that <clears throat> and you have to render motion blur in a picture viewer you cannot see it here okay you have to turn it on um, picture viewer okay this is an, a shutter speed as you can see uh, we have a higher number of in second. It means we have more motion blur in this part and smaller number of the motion. It's a <clears throat> standard of that. So we play that we have a little animation and then render it in a picture viewer. And as you can see, we have a motion blur settings that we have active. You have to play. Uh, some frame to activate the motion blur and then render it in a picture viewer then you can see your motion blur it's very simple if you want more motion blur here another play and as you can see we have wow very high number of the motion blur so make it standard right click to make it a standard in a second <clears throat> okay yeah, let's come here and uh, here. So the shutter speed, as you can see, if uh, this is uh, this fan is turning and a higher number in second, it means the shutter has more time to be open and more light come through camera, and we have more motion blur. <clears throat> nice. Sorry. And shutter efficiency. The sitting here, the shutter efficiency. It controls the efficiency of your motion blur. What does it mean? For example, as you can see, if we have 100% efficiency, you can see the main object and a little offset of the blurriness in of the, um, around it. The efficiency of uh, half of the uh, 15, 50 is nice and as you can see we have <clears throat> we can see a little of the main object and little of the blur but as you can see if you don't want to see the main object you can make it a zero so efficiency is all about the seeing the main object that this number is good lens distortion in quad on cubic we use a quad it's very simple for example <clears throat> If you have a, a cube here and it's in a, in this direction, <clears throat> we're gonna render it in a picture viewer. And then we're going to the camera and uh, lens distortion and higher number. In a positive number, as you can see, we have a, some distortion of, of object or negative of that number the object going inside as you can see you can control the lens distortion you can see it <clears throat> better with this image yeah lens distortion this is all for example no distortion distortion a positive number and negative number you can see lens distortion very easily vignetting <clears throat> it's all about uh, creating a uh, dark uh dark background around our canvas it's very simple if you want to use you can add a background and that's good going to the camera and a little number of the vignetting and here you can see the vignetting effect at the around our <clears throat> a higher number yeah, as you can see, you can see a smaller, darker number of the vignetting around our render. Yeah. 
which is the big thing. And you can offset it, move it in any direction that you want. Chromatic aberration, it means you can uh, separate the blue and red uh, color and create an interesting effect. Uh, like this example. <clears throat> This is an bit of aberration. Look at this. And as you can see, we can, with the aberration, chromatic aberration, you can see the blue and the red color and create a, such an interesting effect. So just it. And the frog shape. Uh, if you open it, we have an, some settings here ballet, angle, bias, and uh, <clears throat> an isotropy and shader what's this for example if you have a, a scene like this that you have a depth of field in the far from the camera and as you can see there are all the these balls with a, a slight source and it's in a real world if you you can see it in your real world if you uh, take a photo if you <clears throat> activate motion blur uh, you activate depth of field you can see such a these effects these are because of your uh, shutter shape and this poke effect nice and let's see a good image for here this is uh, all about the ballet shape and as you can see we have a ballet in six ballet it means you can create, close them. You can create the ballet to create some shapes that create that reflection. I think, uh, where can I see that? Oh, yeah, here. For example, if our shape this is an all about shader. You can change with the ballet, angle, or bias it to create that shapes, to create these shapes different. <clears throat> For example, what is that? The bias. And as you can see, if you change the bias, the positive number and the negative number, uh, if you don't use the shape, different shape, you have just a circle. If you positive number bias, we have a lighter point in the center of that effect and uh, going with the fall off at the edge. <clears throat> in a negative number, we have a um, darker hole in center of that effects, pokey effects. So this is all about uh, the diaphragm shape. Anisotropy and uh, in anisotropy in uh, metals you can see it for example in a reflection instead of this cir um, <clears throat> full circles you can stretch it in a uh, vertical or horizontal shape with number of the changing the number of anisotropy. If you want to insert your shape you can insert any shape any <clears throat> texture to your camera to simulate that effect with a different shape for example leaves you can insert with a black and image a white image <clears throat> and as you can see in the depth of field we have a circle if it's a triangle as you can see we have uh, that effect poke effect with triangles in a depth of field uh, or other shape leaves or other shape that you want you can as you can see you can see the leaves at the <clears throat> depth of field effect so it's very simple so the shutter shape here the diaphragm shape just controlling that poke effects when you use the uh, depth of field or you can insert your black and white image uh, this physical is just used for the camera that you definitely use the physical render. But if you use other uh, render plugin, they are their own camera. This is a default camera of the Cineforge. If you want, to, if you don't want to use any plugin, uh, 
but if you use the V-Ray, uh, if you use the Redshift, Octane, they have own sitting own camera. But if you want to use a physical render of Cinema 4D, you have to use a physical tab and physical camera of that. In the next lesson, we are going to explain the clipping. Hello, my friends. To continue these tutorials on YouTube, subscribe us, like us, and hit the bell icon. And now you will be alerted about all of the amazing videos that we release.